Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, coming to you with another crafting video. This is my first super build. I've got a fully playable pirate ship here for you. And uh, it's full of detail and great texture. And I'm excited to show you. So I'm going to hit you with the drop and we'll get started. I've made myself a template for this sailing ship. It's 5 inches wide by 12 inches long. And I started by cutting out the template so that I could get the curves correct. Once cut out, I transfer those curves to some blocks of foam the same size. Although the ship will be several layers thick, I'm only going to trace the lines on one piece. Then I'll stack those pieces together and take them to my hot wire cutter and with a delicate touch, cut the curves of the boat. First the front and then the curves for the back. Oop, missed a little bit. Let's see if I can clean that up. There we are. There's the ship's back end. Looking good, baby. This would be possible on a, or without the hot wire, but you'd probably want to do them individually with a knife. Here's a shot of all the layers. I actually cut two one inch pieces and I have two one inch pieces glued together for two inch pieces. The next step I measure out the planking for the floor. I separate them a quarter inch a piece. This both will look good scale wise and then kind of give it a grid for play. Once the lines are scored I go back in with a pen and separate them uh, so they look like separate boards. Then I go in and measure uh, one inch increments going the other way. I lightly put in some lines so that I can then trace out in every other plank pattern on the boat. And you'll see I start at the at one of the one inch lines and then every other board will get scored. And then when I move down to one of the consecutive inch marks, I switch up which boards. So ultimately the, the boards between seams will be two inches apart. It makes for an excellent grid and looks pleasing to the eye at this scale. This took a lot of time and I'm only showing you a small amount of the planking I did. I did a bit of this off camera just to uh, save everyone's sanity. Once the major pattern is placed in, I wanted to do the exaggerated wood grain effect. It looks real good at this scale. So I went in with a pen and traced some wood grain grooves into each of the planks. It was a time consuming process, but uh, it will look really good when it's all painted up. You're just uh, filling the boards with texture. And you all know how I feel about my texture. And speaking of texture, here's my little brass wire brush and I'm just going to scrape the foam along the grain and that's just going to add even more wood texture. Check that out. That's going to look great painted. To even further the look, I'm going to go in and at all the seams, I'm going to put in a couple of nail holes with a nice sharp toothpick. 
no, I'm not moving at uh, lightning speed. The video is. Let's get a close up. Oh man, look at that. Super excited. So back to the hot wire cutter. I've got a little shaping to do with my foam. Then around the front and bottoms up just a bit and make them appear more boat like and less foam like. And I'm having great luck with the hot wire cutter this project. Excellent. Check it out. There's the back. There's the front. Starting to look real good. I'm going to cut the front and back sections out. Perfect. Here's the front. And now I'm cutting the back piece. Fantastic. And I'm going to attach each, each piece an inch over. Uh, here I am marking out the, the top part here for some contouring. Careful now, don't ruin what you've just done. Fantastic. I just need to get rid of this extra chunk. At this point I've decided, uh, well, what you see here is there's some notches in here. My good luck with the hot wire finally ran out. And so I went back to the trusty knife and here I am carving this piece into the shape I want. Something a bit smoother and more boat haul like. It doesn't take long, the shape starts to emerge. I just need to remember not to take too much off. And with that part being done, I'm going to go in and shape the bottom up a little bit and round some of those surfaces off. Boy, it's looking good. Perfect. Hey, did you notice something? Why are those two pieces sticking to the bottom one like that? I'm about to show you. For the first time ever, I decided I wanted to play with some magnets in my belt. You noticed I've done the boat in layers. Well, this is how I'm going to make those layers playable. So first I Pick a couple places on the bottom floor, cut out a bit of foam, and stick one of the magnets in. Once the glue is dried, I'll uh, work on another one. I've decided that uh, three magnets for each of the side pieces should be enough. I'll put a, a very thin coating of hot glue over each of the magnets, and that's just to kind of lock those in place, making sure that they don't uh, rip out of the foam when they meet their other magnet counterpart. Now I'm going to do the magnets for the other side in exactly the same way. 
first cutting out the hole for the magnet, dropping in some hot glue and placing the magnet in, paying attention to the polarity. Then once they've cooled, I'll uh, just put a thin little layer back over to lock it in place. As I mentioned before, this is my first time working with magnets, but I was inspired by another YouTuber, uh, Tabletop Witchcraft, who's recently uh, come on, on the scene with some really impressive builds. So I recommend you give him a try after, of course, viewing all of my videos first. So I had a trick to transfer the uh, magnets to the other pieces of foam. And that was to put the corresponding magnets on top of the ones I had already embedded and push the top piece of foam against those magnets um, exactly where I want it to line up. And then I know exactly where to dig the holes for the corresponding magnets. This process served me well through the entire build. And here I am pleased as punch that the magnets are working. And here's another shot of that method. I placed the magnets on top of the corresponding polarity uh, buried in the deck and then I push the top piece down to get those three impressions and that makes lining the magnets up extremely easy. At that point really you just need to remember to keep your polarity straight when sinking the other magnets into the piece of foam. You, you would hate to get one wrong and have one magnet fighting the other two. I had uh, wonderful success with this and I think I'd like to do more uh, big builds with magnets. So look for more magnet type craft in the future. Now that the hall is put together, uh, I hope you didn't think I was going to leave it looking that ugly along the sides. No, of course not. I cut some strips, half inch and quarter inch, out of the dollar store foam core. And I'm going to use this to decorate the edges of the boat. Here I am lining it up. Uh, I'm going to glue it along the bottom and let the curve of the boat angle the pieces of wood. And this is going to mimic that classic boat shape that we're all so familiar with. First I secure it along the length with the hot glue. And then once dry, I take a little of the hot glue, lay it along the length of the plank, and then hold it along the curve with my finger until it dries. This was a very effective method and worked very well for me. Once the glue dried, I would lay the pieces against the table and with a careful hand, cut them away. Uh, I tried cl uh, doing a really clean cut against the deck right away, but that wasn't working very well. So instead, I started doing a very rough cut, and then I would come back in later with a nice sharp knife and clean them up. Now that the method has proven to work, uh, it's just 
board after board after board. Uh, the sides were easy. They were just two boards wide, but the front and back of the boat took a little bit of maneuvering. And you'll see that here in just a second. Uh, it's fun to see your methods uh, work so well. You know, I had thought of some of these ideas in my head and wasn't sure how they would actually translate into the foam, but uh, I've been in, impressed time and time again with this dollar store foam core. Once you remove the paper, it is just so pliable and uh, accepts texture and shaping really well. Uh, I highly recommend it. And it's so cheap at just a dollar. I'm working at the front now and it's really just these little angled pieces. A lot of hot glue and a lot of patience. And I work my way through it. Once I get one side done, I'll trim it clean down the middle, and I'll match the second side up to it. I've sped up the footage. There's no reason to watch me moving at turtle's pace the whole video. Now that would take hours, believe me. <laughs> it took hours, <laughs> believe me. At this point, I'm just thrilled with this method. It's paying off. The boat is starting to look fantastic. And I'm getting more and more excited for this build uh, every minute. Working to finish the back of the boat. Again, just some smaller pieces. To angle into that boat shape, gluing them down nice and secure. Perfect. I'm pretty happy with this. How's it fit? Now it's time to work on the deck section. And I want this to be slightly different. Uh, I noticed in a lot of my source pictures that I ended up looking up for this project that the middle of the boat often had uh, portholes for people within the deck to look out. And I thought I would mimic that by using these quarter inch strips and I, I actually flipped them because the width of the foam core was a little less. And so they're, uh, the foam's kind of jutting out as a nice trim piece. And much like the cladding for the deck, I secure the center first with some hot glue. And then hot glue the edges and bend them over the curve and just hold them for a bit. And once they dry, I go in and I, I cut them away straight at the middles. Here I am doing the other side of the first set of trim. This method worked uh, just as good or even better with the trim because the surfaces were so much easier to work with compared to that curved hull. And now I'm going to do a top piece of trim, uh, securing it in the same fashion. I've decided that that middle section is where I'm going to decorate with some trim boards, and that is where I'm going to 
leave space for my portholes for my guests within my sailing ship. Oop, little excess glue, let me trim that off. If you remember, each section was one inch thick, and so I've cut these half inch pieces of foam which fill this gap just right. And at every inch interval, I am going to put one of these pieces of trim. And ultimately, when the ship is finished inside each section, I will have a little porthole for my guests to look out. Uh, that will be in a later video, unfortunately, and I think you noticed during the intro. Uh, I wasn't able to complete this build, paint and otherwise, but uh, I hope you stay with me throughout the entire build because I've got some big hopes for this piece. It, uh, it should look amazing when it's done. Uh, here I am putting in some wood grain with the pen real quick, just to show you uh, you'd want to dress up something like that before you go ahead and add a, an embellishment. Uh, so I've got the smaller upper part of the boat, and I want to do the same kind of boat plank pattern for it as well. And the effect translates well to this smaller piece. Maybe even a little better because of the intense curve. Uh, it's real important to trim the edge nice and clean so those magnets get the best connection. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp. You'll notice I messed up the front a little bit with that. Uh, but that's okay, I've got a plan later on to fix that. Finally, I'm going to cap this piece off with some of that quarter inch trim. Again, just gluing it into place, letting it dry, and then laying down a thin bead of hot glue along the curve and holding it down while it cools. Then I'm going to trim it clean and do the same for the back. Now I've got some special plans for this back piece. If you've ever seen pictures of pirate ships and sailing ships, the back section where the captain's quarters often are is always very ornate. Uh, it's well decorated. Often it's full of windows so that the captain can look out. And so I'm going to do something similar. To make it a little easier for myself, I'm going to take a piece of foam core, the width of the back portion, and trim it to size before I start decorating. And this way I can really plan the detail work. Using that piece of foam core, I created a paper template. This template is only half the length of the foam core. Uh, but it will be mirrored, so you'll have a nice big double door on the back of this section here. See, I'll have many vertical braces with some windows across the top and maybe some decoration in the bottom panels. I haven't quite decided yet. Here I am measuring out the strip, adding uh, light scores along the certain sections and widening those gaps with pen when I need to. One of the most important features will be the large curved double door. Now that I have everything laid out, I'm going to start cutting the important bits out. Uh, 
making sure I cut the trim. And I'm going to pay a lot of attention to this double door. First the outside of it, and then cutting the inside and removing the actual doors from it as well. I'm going to cut this middle piece of trim from the other side as well. And the upper pieces of trim. The fit looks good. Time to cut the doors out. First one side and the other. And I've got this sped up, but I am taking my time and moving carefully. I'm going to put that middle trim on. Exactly like I've done the whole build. I'm putting it first on the straight piece and then running a bead of glue along and just holding it down along the curve until it cools and dries. You can see this was the top part of the trim, and this is where that door jam will go. First a little bit on the top, just to get it lined up properly. And then I'll carefully pull those arms back and lay a little glue down to secure them. And now it's time for that middle piece of trim. And everything's going to plan. It uh, ends up landing right there at the edge of the door. Exactly as it's supposed to. Looks good. I'm going to measure some uh, more of this quarter inch foam core that I cut out. And I'm going to cut notches out of the trim boards that I just placed in at every interval that I placed one of these vertical beams. And then carefully beating the glue along each beam, I'm going to set those in place. Now, between each beam will be a window at the very top section. And the bottom will be a panel decorated in some fashion. Now it's time for the door. I'm going to take the piece that I cut out and I'm going to split it in half. And that way the planks of the door are going to actually be recessed back from the door jam. Once I've got the door measured and scored the halfway mark, I glue it within the door jam and sketch out the planks for the door. Once I'm happy with them, I go back in and score them with an X-Acto, widen the planks with a pen, and draw in my wood grain. Uh, I'll hit that up with a brass brush to improve the look of the wood grain. And then it's time for the iron work of the door. I'm going to have straps going across each door, and I've got this handy little needle punch tool. I'm going to punch each strap uh, to give it the look of being nailed or bolted into place. Placing the strap along the bottom and along the top of each door. And making sure they line up. Now I'm going to do the little door handles, and I'm going to include locks on mine. So I'm going to punch two holes, one on top of the other. And I've got these fantastic little jewelry pin pieces. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but I use them as little door handles, medieval door handles. So I bend it at a 90 degree and then feed it through the pin hole of the piece. There you go. What do you think? A little medieval door knocker with a keyhole. Uh, I'm going to trim the peg down and then poke it in and glue it into place. 
a map of the other. I think it makes for an absolutely wonderful looking medieval door. Now I'm coming back to the front of the boat. Uh, my planking worked really well, but in some places it came off a little ugly at the front of the boat. So I'm going to sketch out that uh, front pole at the front of the boat and just kind of clean things up a bit. Once I have a rough sketch, I take it to the hot wire and check it out and check it out again. And once I got it looking right and made sure that the fit was nice, I went in and sketched both sides of the game pole so that I knew where to cut out the, uh, the wood cladding that I had placed on previously. Now I just need to cut those sections out and be very careful to do a nice clean job. It's looking good. I've done similar with the bottom, and now it's just time to glue the pole into place. I'm going to make sure that I don't put any glue between the layers so that once everything has dried, um, I'll be able to cut it free and will still maintain the magnetic layers. Once dried, I go back in and I give the pole some rough shaping with an X-Acto. I just soften the edges and kind of carve out chunks and make it look like a hand hewn log. And then I go back in and texture it with the pen and the brass brush. Then very carefully I split that pole between the layers of the build so that I maintain that ability to play on each layer. Uh, add a little wood grain to the edges with a pen and the front is all cleaned up. To finish off this part of the build I add some fascia boards to the sides of the sections here. Uh, each have doors. This part here to the front is the officer's quarters. It has a single door with two windows. And I've decided uh, these portions will be covered up by stairways reaching the upper levels of the deck. And so I didn't want to put any kind of window or anything back there. So I decided to do a rough hewn shingle effect. So uh, first marking them with a pen and going in with an X-Acto and hitting them with a diagonal cut, taking out sections to make them look like angled shingle. The, uh, effect was, uh, the effect worked out really well, and I was pretty pleased with it. And I ended up doing something similar. Now this one's a little different. This side is the captain's quarters, and I also have a, uh, a planning or war room on this ship. So I need two separate doors very close together in the middle. So I've laid down some marks. And now I'm going in with some glue. I'm going to glue this uh, fascia board here to the front of this back section, making sure not to put any glue in the cutout sections. Uh, carefully remove the doors. And just like the other doors, I'm going to take these pieces that I've cut out. I'm going to split them down the middle so that they're much thinner, so that they're recessed back there behind the molding. Mark out for the planks, and then glue the board to the piece. Now 
once dry, using those marks I go in with an X-Acto, cut the boards, go back in with the pen, and then I draw my wood grain and hit it with the brass brush. I'm going to do the same with this door. And once that's complete, I'm going to put on my iron work, the straps across the top and bottom, and then a couple more handles. And then to finish it up, I am going to do the hand hewn shingle effect to both sides. And both sides will have a, a set of wooden stairs in front of them to reach the upper portion of the deck. So I think this will be a great look for behind those stairs. And look at that. Our first stage of our super project, the pirate ship, is complete. And we see a close up of the doors going to the captain's quarter in the war room and the double doors off the back of the ship which will go to a deck that I will build in the next step. And here are all three layers set aside uh, for play. Boy, I've been super happy with this project and can't wait to finish it out. And I hope you stay tuned. Uh, you're not going to want to miss these next videos, so like, comment, subscribe, and share. And everyone, please have a great day and a great evening and craft on.